Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Data Dispatch. I hope you guys had a wonderful day and I wish everybody a wonderful weekend. We're going to be summarizing what happened in the market today, especially after we had some important macroeconomic data that was released. That was the PCE data. And we're going to be talking about what inflation is trending towards. And this has a really big effect on the overall market because a lot of investors and especially the Fed are looking at this data to anticipate are there going to be future interest rate cuts? And if they are, how big are they going to be cut? We also have China that is pumping money into their market via a stimulus. We're gonna be talking about how this affects the US market and on a global perspective, and of course, we'll be talking about Palantir Technologies. Not a ton of news specifically on the day, but we do have some price action to cover. So if you are a new or returning viewer, of course, hit that like button, subscribe for daily videos. And as you know, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm collecting all the data and dispatching it to you. Now, pop it up here. We'll talk about Palantir really quickly here in terms of price action, holding basically at that 37 area. Closing here specifically at 36.84. Uh, this is great in my opinion cooling off. Palantir has had an incredible last few months. Getting past that $30 resistance point, you saw Palantir now climbing up here into the high 30s, being included into the S&P 500. That rebalance has occurred. News has been going well. We've seen partnership expansions. Things are going well for Palantir. And holding at the 37s, I think that is incredibly a good level especially at the volume that we have right now at 43 million, you can see decreasing a little bit here. One big thing that a lot of people are talking about is here, Peter now selling over $1 billion worth of Palantir stock this year. We also saw Alex Karp with some filings that was selling a uh, stock. Now we got to remember Palantir is at yearly highs and we have not seen these price actions for, for many, many years. So the fact that some of the insiders here are selling the stock, doing some profit taking, this is not necessarily something that scares me. And oh my God, what do they know that I don't know? Um, it's not something I think it's important. It's out of our control to get too emotional over. Um, he sold over here over 16 million shares over the three days this week, according to a filing that you got right here. He disclosed selling over, you know, 20 million shares, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of different ways and reasons why inside managers decide to sell the stock. And he doesn't, didn't respond to a request for the comment on what he plans to do with the money. Uh, we know he's 56 years old right here, co-founded Palantir and has $12.4 billion. So, Making big moves right here, I'm not concerned about any type of profit taking happening on that type of forefront. Now, one big thing, Palantir earnings is about a month from now. We're going to the month of October, which is pretty crazy that October is already coming up here. I remember we got nine cents earnings per share, 11 earnings per share revisions in the last 90 days. We're gonna be keeping you guys updated as this gets closer, as the media, the momentum, and we start seeing a lot of trading based off the earnings, that's where we're gonna start focusing on that more. A big piece of data was the key inflationary data that came out today. This came out at 2.2% in August, lower than expected. And it rose 0.1% for the month, putting the 12 month inflation rate at 2.2%. Now, excluding food and energy, we've seen here the inflationary gauge was below Wall Street's estimate in the lowest since early of 2021. Now, as we know, the PCE price index is a large and a very, very reliable gauge for the Fed to focus on the cost of goods and services, and that's reflected with what their future decisions are going to be in the actual determination of those interest rates. Now, we can talk about here, all quiet on the inflation front. The economy is showing a little bit signs of a, you know of cooling, but is still doing fairly well and is remaining resilient. Um, the continued process of inflation, though, I think is good for what a lot of American consumers are hoping for. And that's a reduction or the cooling off in just consumer prices. I mean, home prices, getting mortgages right now, we're seeing a reduction in those interest rates. And I think that's important, especially for those first time home buyers to have more buying power for the increase of demand that could be coming here in the near future. We're seeing futures that are actually staying positive right here and in progress, talking about here with the related costs, everything is expensive right now, right now. I think it's good that the Fed did make their 50 basis point interest rate cut. 
This is the first time that we've seen this since 2020. It's been over four years and really focusing on their inflation right here while or their support on actually helping out with the labor markets. Now, this inflation report could give the central bank more reason to confidently cut interest rates further. The question is, you know, in the next meeting and within the next month, how much are they going to cut rates? Are they and by what type of severity? They're hoping for persistent cooling in inflationary figures. So it's good to see that we're seeing inflation going down, hoping for the extension of that, allowing for borrowing costs that will ease strain on the corporate and the household balance sheet, just like what we mentioned right here. So continuing in that direction, things are looking bullish. Wall Street is coming off a winning session, especially right here after a uh, batch of assertive investors uh, talking about the strength of the U.S. economy. Now, of course, these things kind of go back and forth. And one of the main reasons and what I'm trying to talk about here is as we're seeing inflation and, you know, the economy is slightly cooling and the Federal you know, Reserve is cutting interest rates. This is, you know, the sign that they're saying, hey, the economy isn't doing you know as well as it was. We're seeing signs of cooling. This is why we're cutting the rates, making borrowing costs more attractive for consumers across the nation. However, the market is reacting in a good way to this. And that's what we're seeing right now, especially with these record closes. Now, overall, the market, what we've seen, S&P 500, just slightly down. NASDAQ down here, down Jones, you know, up a little bit. But consolidation on the day at these record highs and doing much better than we were originally anticipating for September. Historically, September is not a good month for um, the broader market. Um, however, with that first basis point cut that we've seen, you know, in 50 years, or <laughs> hopefully not 50 years, in four years, uh, I think that's being a big uh, catalyst for why we're seeing a green month of September. Also, on top of that, you have China that is launching a late stimulus to meet the 2024 growth targets. And issuing over here over 2 trillion yuan in special sovereign bonds. Now, they lowered their interest rates and injected liquidity into the system, assembling this last-ditch stimulus assault to pull economic growth back to towards the yearly's roughly 5% target. So they have stimulus coming into here, which means we can see different types of markets, such as crypto, that has a big world type of involvement, especially in the Asian countries, that can accumulate in price, just with the stimulus coming into the markets, and especially just the Chinese economy. Um, and on the heels of that, they're saying here that they're estimating and being optimistic that this package would lift annual output by 0.4% relative to what it has been. Um, they are on track for the best week since 2008 on stimulus expectations. So how is that going to affect the uh, you know American markets? Only time will tell, but I think it's going to have a positive influence just in terms of market capitalization and more liquidity coming into those markets. Uh, other than that, that's all about a half for you guys. What do you think is going to be happening uh, this week? Do you think we're going to see the continuation here for October for the market doing well and in the green? Do you think with the inflationary report that we got, do you think we're going to see another basis point cut in the next meeting? And what's your opinion on Palantir and Peter selling all those shares? Peace out, take care, and have a wonderful weekend.